Greetings and welcome to our show highlighting Honkfest. Yes. Yes, Honkfest 2019. We know it, we love it. <laughs> welcome to you both. In the studio with me are Rebe Garofalo and Ken Field, two organizers of this awesome event, which this year occurs October 11th through 13th. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with Honk, as ever, so why don't we just jump right in here. Um, Ken, what's shaking with Honk this year? Well, we're, you know, we're super excited. We're two of the, uh, I, how many organizers do we have this year? Nine-ish. Nine-ish organizers, and uh, we've been working pretty much the whole year since the last festival to put this festival together. We, we uh, are very excited about uh, what's going to happen this year. There are a lot of changes. Uh, New bands going to be coming in this year, and um, and then some of the things that we've been doing for now 14 years uh, that people we love and that uh, we're gratified that so many other people love. The classic honk experience. The would you would you call that classic <laughs> as well as the revolutionary new honk? <laughs> um, so, Rebe, what is the classic honk experience uh, to the uninitiated? Well, honk could be a well-oiled machine by now, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> except we keep having this desire to add new things to it and make it more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, but the classic honk experience, I think, is family-friendly performances for free in the street, um, no stages, no electricity, all music continuously unmediated, no distinction between artist and audience. One big happy family enjoying themselves. That's that's great. Yeah, I've been I've been to Honk, and that's like the perfect description of it. And radical politics. And radical politics, activism. Yes, yes totally. Um, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe um, talk us through, Ken, uh, what what's going on each of those days. Right. So, uh, well, actually, I want to add that sure. the festival itself is a gathering of mostly uh, activist street bands, uh, community-based bands, bands that are not, uh, gen in general, commercial bands. Uh, so it's it's a kind of a unique festival, and the festival, as Ruby said, is free, uh, open to the public, of course. Uh, so, um, but uh, what happens on Friday? We have a, a couple on Friday afternoon, a couple of uh, political actions that some of the visiting bands are going to participate in around the area. Uh, we also this year are having a pickup band, which is going to rehearse on Friday afternoon from 3 to 5. Um, and people can uh, sign up. Anybody who plays an instrument can sign up and join the pickup band. Cool. Uh, one of our uh, regular things that, that we do is have a lantern parade through the streets uh, surrounding Davis Square, and kids make uh, kids are invited to participate in a lantern making workshop in the afternoon, and then in the early evening when it starts to get dark, they parade in several different parades led by several different bands through the streets of Somerville. It's a much loved part of the festival. Mm. Uh, incorporates families and some of the visiting bands, um, and in the evening we're having a big. Um, uh, event at Bow Market uh, right here in Union Square uh, and so uh, all the bands will be there and um, uh, I think the public's invited to that I, I think we can't keep them out so all right. <laughs> uh, Saturday we have music all day starting at noon there uh, kickoff ceremonies uh, at noon in uh, Davis Square and in uh, Seven Hills Park in Davis Square and uh, uh, we'll have some some event there to to initiate the. Uh, the there's a couple of surprises that uh, and a couple of people that are coming that we think people will be excited to to see, um, and hear, and then uh, all afternoon from noon till 9 p.m. Bands all over Davis Square uh, playing for free, different corners of the square, so they don't get in each other's way. We also have uh, starting last year I think or maybe two years ago. Uh, art, uh, activist art mm. along Elm Street in Davis Square that um, people can engage with. So there's a, a visual component as well this year. And Sunday, there's a parade starting at noon from Davis Square to Harvard Square. Uh, very exciting and uh, always uh, something that people love. Uh, we hope people continue to line up along Mass Ave and, and witness the parade and then as we arrive in Harvard Square. And we'll be playing uh, this year, uh, bands will play, a few of the bands will play on the main stage in Harvard Square. 
and we're still working out some of the other details. So that's, that's sort of the general, did I miss anything? No. <laughs> Good. And, and uh, I'll just mention the pickup band, which I'm co-leading, so that's why I'm talking about the pickup band. Um, we'll perform <coughs> uh, on Saturday as well as hopefully in the parade on Sunday. Okay. All right. And uh, Rebe, how, how do you select the band? Is it, is it like a curated thing that this committee of nine does? Um, or, or is it anybody that is an activist band is, in, is invited? How, do, how does it, it work? It is a curated thing. We, mm -hmm. put out, we put out the word. By now, there is a vast community of you know, radical street bands, mm -hmm. activist street bands. And we put out the word to that community um, and encourage people to apply. And from those applications, we cull through them and we select to what we feel will you know, will be the best presentation we can make for the public. And, you know, included in that is some of the usual suspects, bands that we know will be crowd pleasers year after year. They come back, but we always want to introduce something new. So we uh, typically we bring in two new international bands each year. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll leave the pronunciation of one of them to Ken because he's been <laughs> practicing it all morning. <laughs> And there's a, there's a complement of new bands each year. Yeah. And we tend to want to feature things that people may not see every year uh, in Somerville. So we bring up a band from New Orleans. Um, we keep our eye out for bands that are gender non-binary, all female bands. Um, so there's something new to add to the mix every year. Great. And uh, so, like, do you all fly those bands in yourself? How, how does that work? Um, the bands play for free. The yeah. bands do not get compensated. They make their way here, and from the fundraising we do, we do make the commitment to defer, to, to, to uh, subsidize the travel of every band to the extent that we can. That's really great. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah, it's, it, you know, one of the ways to think about this festival is it's almost like a conference, like a, a gathering of these bands, and uh, not so much, like we don't encourage the bands to think of it as a gig, you mm -hmm. know, it's not really a gig, it's a chance for them all to get together, learn from each other, uh, just discuss uh, issues that come up when you are this kind of band, which is a little bit out of the mainstream of the musical scene, you know, being a non-commercial band, mm. so uh, that's part of it. And, and Rebe, you were mentioning that um, bands were looking for more workshop opportunities, and so, yeah, I mean, so this year there might this, be that? I mean, from the band's point of view, this is a real convergence for them. It's their opportunity to share with each other. Mm -hmm. So every year there's, you know, there's a tension between, you know, everybody wants to perform as much as possible because that's a kick, but then everybody wants to take time to um, share political strategies, do tune sharing, um, a, a, a big thing that we've been taking on lately is working with community groups and demonstrations to coordinate their chants with our music mm. um, so that we're not working at cross purposes to uh, the political groups we work with when we're demonstrating alongside them. Mm. Um, and so we're trying to take the time to do all of those things within the festival as well. And we want to balance that need for sharing with the obvious desire to perform. And the desire to sleep and eat. No, 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 you can yeah. sleep when you're dead. <laughs> so the time is limited, you know, what we found is that it's really hard to squeeze everything into uh, the weekend, yeah. Yeah, wow. And you, um, I noticed that there's a call for people that may want to host bands mm -hmm. or provide uh, other kind of spaces. Are you still looking for that this yeah. year? Absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. So we, um, the, the bands are in general housed at private homes. People mm -hmm. volunteer to let bands stay there. Uh, a lot of people find that to be an extremely rewarding experience. They get to know out of town musicians, bands. Uh, they make lifelong friends. A lot of the time, the bands that, um, or the people that house bands, if the band returns year after year, they, the same people house them uh, quite often. Uh, we also are in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign, so to help uh, with some of these expenses that, that Reby mentioned and other expenses we have. Um, and we uh, need volunteers to help with the festival. We're all volunteers, nobody gets paid. Uh, so uh, we solicit volunteers from the community and we get a tremendous response. Uh, but all of that stuff, um, 
is uh, hopefully available now on our website. Our website's a work in progress, but uh, uh, take a look at honkfest.org and um, you should be able to find a way to contact us there to help with all of those things, with housing, with uh, volunteering, with donations to our Kickstarter, um, all those things. Yeah. And let's say somebody does want to volunteer mm -hmm. for, um, for the festival. What, what would they be doing? Uh, there are quite a number of things. So they might be helping with transportation for the bands. We rent a couple of vans and we need people to drive some of the bands around. They might be helping with setting up uh, the, the, the tents uh, on Saturday. Uh, they might be helping. We, we have t-shirts that we, we sell to help support the festival. They might be helping with that. Um, we also go around and collect donations and a lot of people really enjoy doing that, carrying around buckets and meeting a lot of people and people are, are usually extremely uh, supportive of donating to the festival at the festival itself. So there's, there's lots of different ways uh, that might be helping prepare food or helping to uh, serve food to the bands. Um, we need people to help wrangle the bands. We need yeah. parade marshals to help the parade stay on track. Um, so anybody that wants to do that, uh, you know, other than going to the, the website, you can also just send an email to volunteer at honkfest.org uh, or for housing, if they want to offer housing, housing at uh, honkfest.org. Um, and the Kickstarter campaign is honkfest.org slash Kickstarter. So it's all pretty easy to remember. Okay. Um, and the housing thing is a really unique feature of the festival, and it's, by, by all accounts, an incredibly rewarding experience. Um, I've just finished co-editing a book on Honk that'll be out in December. Very nice. Um, it's called Honk, a street band renaissance of music and activism. Watch for it. Um, <laughs> but there's a chapter in the book on Honk hospitality which is really fascinating. Apparently, there is a whole anthropological literature on hospitality. Mm. Um, and in this case, it's an act where it's, it's, it's an activity where very deep relationships are forged. Mm. And people come back to the same homes year after year sometimes. And, and you know, the interesting thing about that is what we're, what we're forming, what we found, and I don't know if it was an intent from the start, I don't think so, I think it just happened organically, that this community, this honk community, has formed. And it's not just the bands. Yeah. It's, the, it's the local community as well. And I think the housing is a big part of it. And the volunteering yeah. uh, causes people to not just watch this festival, but to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And when we say it's a, a festival of activist street bands, you know, commonly people say, well, what does that mean? What's activists mean? And of course, we all have our own definition. But my definition is that you're, you're actively involved you're not passive. You're not just watching TV. You know, you're, you're participating. Uh, you're doing something to help make it happen. And that, the housing part, the volunteering part, all helps to make it happen. It creates this community that um, is kind of all one in a, in a lot of ways. And the community has expanded, as uh, a lot of people know, to many honk festivals all over the world. Uh, I'm wearing a t-shirt from a honk festival in Wollongong, Australia, near Sydney. Uh, there's honk festivals in uh, Brazil, uh, several Five of them. Five of them in Brazil. <laughs> wow. <laughs> big thing in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, in Lon in uh, London, I believe, in uh, Toronto, uh, in Austin, Seattle, New York, Providence, uh, Eugene. Uh, there's just, they're, they're sprouting up and they're all independent uh, honk festivals. We, uh, uh, you know, we're all in communication, but it, it's, a, it's a worldwide community. Very nice. Yeah. And Somerville is the original honk? Yes, yeah. Somerville is the original honk. Yeah, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to get swelled heads about it. Right, but, right. You know, yes. <laughs> Definitely something to tout. Um, so in our, in our last moments, are there any uh, bands you want to highlight? Anything uh, that people yeah. should look out for? Well, we have, uh, as, as Ruby mentioned, we have some new bands. Uh, there's a, an all-female band from Brazil called uh, Femini no, Fanfara Feminina Sagrada Profana, and we're very excited about them, great band. Um, we're bringing up the uh, Young Fellows Brass Band from New Orleans. We're bringing uh, a couple of rah-rah bands, one from New York and one from, uh, from Boston. Uh, this is a Haitian musical style that involves fixed horns that uh, it's just you have to hear it to, mm. to they've been here before. And I'm going to cheat and the, uh, we're bringing a German band that's called uh, Bolshevistische Kirkapelle Schwarzrot. And they're a band that formed way in East Germany 
uh, before Germany was reunified. Mm -hmm. uh, correct me if I'm getting any of this wrong. Oh, no, it's correct. Um, and they, you know, come from a, a culture of resistance. Uh, so we're very excited about them coming. Um, and then we have a number of, uh, of young bands, uh, Summer Street Brass Band, which is a, a band of youth from the Boston area. Um, we have the ba Band Land Brass, 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 Brass Band, Band which from was Cambridge formed. Cambridge Range in Latin. Yeah. Um, so uh, just a, a range of not only cultures and uh, genders, and, but uh, ages as well. Um, and, uh, you know, there's basically something for everyone, or maybe there's everything for everyone. You know, but it's, uh, it's really exciting. Yeah, it sounds exciting, yeah. Every year, I look forward to it. Um, I'm sure, I'm, I know I'm not the only one. Um, so we encourage everybody to get out to Honk Fest, October 11th through 13th. Um, and, you know, as, as Ken was saying, if you're interested at all in hosting and volunteering and donating, uh, head over to the We're website. Playing in the pickup band. Oh, there you are. Yeah, so there's no way to be passive there's no way. With, this, yeah. with this event. Yeah. Uh, we know it, we love it. Um, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Rebe. Our pleasure. And, Thanks, Steve. Uh, we look forward to this year's honk. Thanks so Thanks. much. Yep.